Hey guys, John here. Today we're in pigments and I've been making a lot of respaces recently and I wanted to make my own twist, make it a little bit more aggressive. And this is what I came up with here. It just dawned on me that I spelled that with one G. How is that aggressive? That's just dumb. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and recreate this patch here in a fresh instance of pigment. So let's go to the new preset. So basically, the thing that you probably should know is that respaces are basically two saw waves. Sometimes you can use a square, but they're both low, right? Obviously, it's a base, but they're going to be pretty detuned from each other on the fine tuning to really get that phase cancellation moving. And then you can add some cool stuff on that with notch filters, distortion, and really crazy fun stuff, chorus, all that crazy stuff. So anyway, let's get started here. So the first one's going to be an analog engine here. And for this one, I did use two saw waves. So let's go ahead and put the two saw waves. And then we can just drag the whole course down by 12 semitones or one octave. We could do it individually here, but you know, why not? You're gonna see why I didn't do that. So we have two saw waves here and then we're actually gonna be using a little bit of FM. So right now, we have this here. And the fine tuning is off by uh, negative 0.512. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring this obviously in the mix. <laughs> That's pretty close right there. I think I actually dropped, drop, no, I'd left the drift alone. Okay, so the drift is gonna be fine. Don't worry about the drift here. So we're already getting that like detuning phase cancellation, phase reconstruction concept going on here. And then from here, we're gonna add a little bit of FM to make it a little bit dirtier. So for this one, I brought this up by one octave here. So let's go ahead and do that. So plus 12 right there. And the fine tuning is gonna be down by negative 0 0.296. So negative 0 0.296. And this is kind of a finicky control because small different adjustments of the pitch of what you're FMing does really change the timbre and also the amount as well. So this is gonna be 0 0.020. So take a listen how this changes it. and then changes to a triangle. So you see just off the bat, a little bit of FM can really make it nasty. See, that's a like clean and oh, we're kind of face canceling, it's kind of cool, but you put a little FM in that, it grows some hair on it. You can go overboard pretty easily, so that's why we're kind of sticking here at a low amount. So that's pretty much all we have to do for the analog engine. We're gonna add a little bit of noise to kind of just help out with the other effects later on. So we're gonna be on white noise here and the volume is gonna be negative 25.1. Just a little bit. Okay, so what can we do to make this a little bit more aggressive before we start doing distortion and crazy stuff like that? So for the wavetable, I kind of just looked around what came default with pigments that kind of just sounded aggressive. So if I turn off the analog and the utility engine and the effects, you kind of can hear a little bit, but we're gonna hear it more once we go here. So this one is gonna be Poltergeist and that's going to be here in the wavetable. And what folder was that in? In process, that was in process. So let's go ahead and open this up. Processed and scroll down. Here we go. It's gonna be this guy. So let's turn off our analog engine here. Let's close that menu that drives me crazy. So there's kind of a lot of nasty harmonics in here. So that might be kind of something cool to kind of move around. So this one is getting modulated slowly by LFO1 at 0 0.09. So let's go ahead and do something like that. So LFO1 here and a small amount at 0 0.09. And then we got to go ahead and change it here. So basically free running. And then we need to change it to a triangle and slow this puppy down. We're at 0.143 hertz. So very slow. 0.143, something like that. 
but that's where we're adding we're also going to add a little bit of unison here i believe two voices and then detune 333 which is something kind of like that and i believe did we do that for the first one we didn't add that yet so we do need unison on the first one which is going to be two so let's go ahead and add that and kind of see how that sounds there we go and 2.59 for the detune And then we add in our wavetable and turn that down because that one's kind of aggressive. So volume negative 9.37. So let's bring that down. Negative 9.37. There we go. See, so we should want a little bit of touch of that in there. And then for the utility engine, I do believe we did a su sub sine wave because what's going to be crazy, we're going to be processing this and doing a lot of weird stuff, courses, notch filtering, distortion, and you do lose some low end to that. And to kind of bring this back to give you a nice solid low end, a sub oscillator is going to be really nice if you go direct out. So let's go ahead and add that here. So turn this on here. We're already on the uh, sub saw or sub sign and let's bring it out of the filter to the direct out and while we're here let's turn this down and use the macro three for that already because i believe i always use three yep three so that modulation amount is going to be one so we're kind of utilizing the whole macros range for that so go all the way to the top and label this as sub and you can see we really get that clean low in there so let's bring this down for now and we have to go to the keyboard tab because a little bit of glide goes a long way. So we have glide time at 69. <laughs> that was not intentional, but also awesome. Okay. Okay, so for this one, we're kind of doing something interesting. We're using two filters, two MS-20s. So for this one here, let's go and add the MS-20. And let's check out our modulation. So our cutoff basically sits at 41.41. And let's go ahead and add that. So 41.41, something like that. And our macro is going to be modulating that. Or not really modulating, but controlling. You know what I'm saying. At 0.89. So 0.89, do something kind of like that. And this is nice too, because we can kind of just move around the tone that we'd like. Feel free to add an envelope to that. I didn't personally, I didn't really care for that, but totally cool thing to do if you'd like to. And let's name this because being organized is cool. So let's name that cut. And then also here for the resonance, we're gonna add 0.52 to that. So second one's gonna be resonance, 0.52, and that should be cool. And bring this up a little bit, give some of that resonance here and just label it res, that's fine. Now here's a cool little trick as well. So this filter outputs going into the second filter, right? So let's turn this on, go to the MS-20, and we're going to use a high pass here. And the resonance, we're gonna be kind of significantly high at 0.456, so 0.456. And the whole point of this is really to cut out some of the low end, yes, but also to boost some of that nice low end, that juicy stuff that we want. So we're going 66.2, right? So bring this down 66.2, and kind of listen how it gives that nice low end. Know what I'm saying? A little something right there. Okay, so now we are ready for effects because this is where it kind of gets really fun. Let's go to our effects and let's see what we have going on here. Let's turn this on and we're using every bank here. So turn off B and then kind of slowly start turning these off. So first one is going to be distortion, right? So let's go ahead and add a distortion. And we're going to be using the tape one because I think that one kind of sounds best for this. So the drive is going to be at 41.6. And then our dry wet's going to be at 0.8, so 80%. Something like that. And we're also boosting, boosting the output at negative 0.564. It's gonna compensate the volume here. Okay, so moving on here, we're going to a multiband. Now this is kind of really up to taste, so let's kind of go ahead and dial that in here. So with this multiband, I did like changing the low end to 120 here. By default, it's 88, so kind of just right click and go to about 120. I kind of feel like that sounds the best. And kind of just dial in what you feel like the kind of tonal balance that you like. 
I do like the sizzly kind of frequencies at the top there. And then the out, low, mid, and high. Again, that's to taste. Kind of like that there. And then next up, we're going to go and do some EQ. So this is more so as a corrective EQ, right? So I know, I know I do this a lot, but I just hate that really nasty low end. That sounds gross. Oh, disgusting. Okay, now the next one here is gonna be kind of interesting because we're kind of going close to the disgustingness and bringing like the low end of that up. And I think I just add a little bit of high on that shelf here. So on the shelf, something kind of like that, just to give it a little bit, little bit more pizzazz here. So now the second one is gonna be interesting. We're using a couple different things. So let's turn these off. So we're using a multi-filter and kind of moving a notch around. So let's go to the multi-filter and select the notch here. Slope 12 is fine. And I believe we have the Q, did we change that? 155, I think we might have. Yeah, we did change that, 155, something like that. And the whole goal is kind of just slowly move this around. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So basically our cutoff is going to be staying at 655. So something like that, 655. And then we're modulating this with the same LFO that we did before. So, but this one's going to be 0 0.07 for depth. So drag and drop 0 0.07. And there we go. Next up, we're going to add some chorus. Go ahead and add that there. And yes, I know we're actually using the regular course. I always use the Juno 6, but this time we're using the regular one and the preset reverb alike because this one's actually really cool. And I believe we did it to 11%, something like that. So we drop this down. And then last but not least, we're gonna add a reverb on a bass. Let's break all the rules. I don't care because it does sound cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so this reverb is going to be at 17%. So let's go ahead and add that reverb at 17%, something like that here. And let's check our values because I believe, I, I don't know if I changed something yet, yeah, 0.46. Yeah, a little bit more decay, 5, 112, something like that. And then that should be the same. Okay, so that's pretty much it here. And that's without the sub actually in the macro. So use that sub with caution. I'm gonna leave this down for now. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave it just exactly how it is right there. So you can turn that down if you don't like it. So macro number four, let's let, let label this effects and let's actually start mapping stuff. So the fourth one, going to the distortion, this is 80. Yeah, let's bring that down and 0 0.80, something kind of like that. And then the multi band and the parameter, we're going to leave those alone. Go to the multi filter. Did I put that on there? No, I left that in there. Okay, so the next ones are just going to be the chorus and the reverb for the next ones. So, chorus and the reverb, the chorus amount is going to be 11%. So, drag that down to 11. And then the reverb is going to be 17. So, bring that down to 17. There it is. And last but not least, before we let you go, we do need to change this to Legato here so it kind of has that nice functionality to play with. Oh, that sizzle on top. I think it's pretty close to this one here too. So 
So there you go. You too can have this patch here spelt incorrectly with one G, which is totally not aggressive. Anyway, so if you like this patch, you can get it for free in the video description below. But I do suggest that you follow along and kind of just make it and put your own twist on because that's the way we all learn this cool stuff. So yeah, hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.